So we want to go now. We want to start in the Word of God. Y'all ready for some word this morning? Hallelujah. Well, uh, last week we continued on talking about the vessel of the Lord, that we're vessels. Remember that a vessel is a container. And it's not just a con any container. It's a container that transports like a ship, right? A ship is a vessel. It carries cargo. It carries people from one place to the next. If I have a water bottle, that's a container. And it, it takes the water from wherever the tap is or the, the well is, and it brings it to my mouth. A blood vessel. It contains blood, but it also transports blood. So it's something that is a moving thing. It's to carry. And so last week, we just, we've been talking about we're vessels of the Lord. He's preparing our vessels for every good work. We've already studied all that. And then last week, we studied a little bit about what the treasure is in the earthen vessel. He said, I put some treasure in that vessel. There's water in that water bottle. There's, there's people that can be in a ship. But he said, I put some treasure in your vessel. And this treasure is not just for you to hold, but it's for you to transport. It's for you to take this and do something with it. So last week we talked about three areas of treasure that's in our us. One thing we learned that is he said Christ in you, the hope of glory. We have Christ in us. That's not talking about the man Jesus in us because a man couldn't come in my body. But Christ says means the anointed one. It's the anointing that's in us. It's the anointing of Christ that comes to the same word as special gifts and, and all the, it's a, it, that word Christ anointing are just so close. It's the same word pretty much as, as, as spiritual gifting that it comes upon you. So we learn that we not only have uh, the uh, anointing of God, but then with that anointing comes gifts. Right? He said, I put gifts in you. He said, I put gifts differing one place. Another place he says, uh, a, a diversity of gifts. There's all kinds of gifts set here in your vessels. You don't just have one. You have many gifts in you. And you don't, I don't know what my gift is. Well, I'll tell you what, you're gonna, if you stop and look around and see what you do well, you'll see it. you're already operating probably in your gifts. Nobody just named it that, called it that. People sitting out there who have a gift of, of preaching in them or they, of speaking and, and anointed speaking or, or to say not, but um, uh, uh, inspired speaking. Prophecy is inspired speaking. That's when something's moved. It's a gift in you that you can speak the right thing at the right time. There's some people out there selling used cars today with a gift of, of, gift of speaking on them. You ever been conned by one of them? No, I mean informed by one of them? That's a gift in them. There's some people just got the gift. They just got a gift. They don't know. They're supposed to be using it for the kingdom. But you know what? We use our gifts in the kingdom, but we're also supposed to be using our gift in our daily jobs. There really is no different. People talk about secular jobs. So, you know, we're, no. Y'all, we are the same person wherever we go. There's really no such thing as that. Once you're a Christian, it's not secular. Now it's of Christ, whatever you do. You're doing it as a him. It's a gift that he's given you. It's abilities that he's given you. And so we talked about that last, and we even went right on over into, can women be used in the gifts, didn't we? Ooh, was I brave or what? That was, a, that was God Almighty. It was not Pam Weeby, I'll tell you. But, but I was obedient. And really, the word of my husband, who he's supposed to be here. I'm like looking at the door, thinking he's coming in any minute. Uh, he's stuck on a train up here. But... Uh, Gary had so to that morning, you're supposed to talk about the place of a woman. I had no idea how that was going to work into this, the message. But it did. Because there's, there's in every one of our vessels. And I can't reteach that. If you're interested in women in the ministry, uh, then go back and watch last week's message. And I, I went into those places. But I also touched on something else. The third part I said is in us. Is if you have the spirit, you have anointing. If you have the spirit, you have gifts. Because they're the gifts of the spirit. The other thing you have is you have fruit. You have the fruit of the Spirit. It's not your fruit. It's the Spirit's fruit. And if he's in you, then you have it. There's different things that are, we talk, we talk about the fruit. We can put the fruit up there if you uh, don't know what they are. Galatians 5 and 22. He talks about the fruit of the Spirit, or the Spirit's fruit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. We hear those and just kind of go over our head. This is the fruit. This is the manifestation. This is what comes out of having the Spirit. Now you have them in you, whether or not you're demonstrating them or not. There's, there's two verses there, 22 and 23. It, it, whether or not you're demonstrating them, they're in there. Amen. 
what I want to ask you is how do you carry this fruit, these gifts, this anointing? I said it's something you carry from one place. How do you get that out? What does it look like when you have meekness or temperance? What does this look like? Well, I'm going to talk today, I'm going to dev into this, a word that people can get real confused about, and it's, it's, a, it's huge. It, I'm telling you, this is, a, it's, it's works. Works. What comes to your mind when I talk about works? Now this is the, the this is out of the spirit, but then he talks another place that talks about the works of the flesh. That's also things that can you. But then he also talks about works. All through the Bible there's works. See, I mean you want to quote a scripture or something comes to your mind about works. What does works mean? Somebody said something, okay. I said labor. Labor. Fakes without works is dead? Oh, it's funny you use that one. That's face. Isn't that we? I'll show you my faith by my works. Works is labor. That word works means toil. It don't sound fun, does it? <laughs> don't sound very fun. But what I've understood is that works matter. Works is, you said, you quoted, I'll show you my faith by my works. Works without faith, is de faith without works is dead. So you get these two religious camps. Those that feel like you just say by grace. Oh, is there a scripture that says that? Let's put some of those up there. Uh, I got a bunch here. Let's um, do Titus 3 and 5. This is the folks who say, well, you know, works don't really matter. It's just about your faith. As long as you got faith, you got Jesus. Me and Jesus. Got our own thing going. Uh, don't really matter how you live. Oh, let's find this one here. Titus, by, by works, not by works of righteousness we, we, we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us. Say amen to that. By the washing of regeneration and the new renewing of the Holy Ghost. There's one of those. Let's go to another one. He said, uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 9. 2 Timothy 1 and 9. He said, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? That's us. Say, that's us. That's me. Not according to our works. Praise God for that. But according to his own purpose and his grace, which was given us in Jesus Christ before the world even began. Isn't that powerful? He didn't pick you. He did not save you because of your good looks or how good looking you think you are. That's just the way it is, brother. You might as well face it, brother Charlie. It's not that big laugh. It's not that humor. It's not all the Greek and Hebrew you want to quote me and try to keep me straight. Keep me straight, Bob. It's all right. It's not according to your works. Okay, what did he say? One of the most famous ones is Ephesians 2 and 9. Ephesians 2 and 9. We're talking about works here. Not a works lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus Wait a minute, we're, it's not of works? Okay. But we were created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Before. Well, the other scripture said before the earth began. So it wasn't good works that saved us or keeps us in this place. But we were saved for some good works. Because I have some stuff in me. I have gifts, I have anointing, I have treasure, all this good stuff. If it's not given out with some works, that's how I get it out, then you're never going to feel any mercy if I'm not going to show you some mercy. You're going to know the goodness of the Spirit of God one of the, in me if I don't stop and help somebody change a tire every now and then. If I don't forgive somebody, I, want, if I, don't, I can't ever get the gift of, uh, of the Spirit, of the, of the fruit of long suffering until I can put up with you. Do you see, this stuff starts manifesting itself. Oh, I got, I got the fruit of the Spirit. Then how does it look? 
You know how it's going to look? It's good works. You're going to start helping somebody. You're going to be nice to somebody. You're going to be kind to somebody. There's some mercy going to start coming out of you. Not because of your good works, but be, not, I'm not saved for, because of my works, but because of my, I'm saved, I will do good works. My works do not save me. I am saved, therefore I, have, I am going to start doing some good works. He said, I'll show you. You talk about faith. Okay, that's good. But I want to tell you, he said, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you how my faith is. And faith is one of the fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to show you my faith by my works. My deeds, how I behave myself, how I carry myself. The Bible says a man ought to know how to possess his vessel. It's your vessel, honey. It's not my vessel. It's not my job to clean up your vessel. The only person close to helping me clean up my vessel is my husband. And he's coming. But the truth is, it's not even his job because the Father is both of our heads, right? I am to clean up my own vessel. He said, you need to know how to Boy, I threw some of y'all with that husband bit. Don't, don't hate me. Oh, you woman's liber. I'm not trying to say. I shouldn't even have said that. Re-race. E -ra Rewind. That's right. It's the good father. But the truth is, you cannot show faith without works. You cannot be filled with the love of God at some point that that love is not trying to get out of you to somebody. He needs your vessel. He picked your vessel. He chose you. He did not pick you and make you so perfect so you can both say, look what I did. There's nobody, don't you just cannot, I won't say hate, but you don't hate anybody. We tell that to our kids. Can you not just stand a boastful person? They just turn you off, don't they? Oh, I just did this. Bless God. I gave this to the Lord. Oh, I fasted so long. That's what the Pharisees did. Are we supposed to give? Are we supposed to pray? Are we supposed to fast? Of course, those are good things. But that's not about going to stand up and look at me. I give alms to the poor. He said it made him sick. It's self-righteousness. But there is a righteousness. There's right living. There's right doing. And there's many promises to those that will walk after righteousness. Out of my righteousness, I'm already righteous in Christ. And if I am, then I'm going to start acting a little righteous. Amen? Oh, you may not got there yet, but there's something inside you. I guarantee, I'll tell you how I know somebody's been born again. Not because they do everything right, but because they want to. Their desire changes. They don't like it when they lose their temper and act like a crazy person. Before, they're proud of it. Man, I gave them a piece of my um, slang in there. I got to stop it. Get a, I'm catching myself now. That gangster walk, I'm getting hold of it. I'm going to be prim and proper. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lost my train of thought. Wow. We want to do right. You have a desire to do right. That's in you. Because you already know there's something in you that wants to be somebody. There's somebody in you that wants to do something. There's something in you that God put in you when he breathed into you. And then when his spirit fills you, you cannot help but know there's purpose. And you you let people sit on a pew long enough. If you got one of those churches and you got five people do everything in the church and nobody's asked to do anything, they get real disgruntled. You know why? They don't feel complete because they're not doing, they're not pouring out. And you know what causes that is people that have the other side we ain't got to that but you better do some works. And if you ain't got everything going on, we can't be used in this church because you ain't done this, you ain't quit doing this, you ain't quit doing that. And we had this list of do's and don'ts that we tried to make people qualified for. And you might find five people in the church is qualified and if you really look deeper, they probably wasn't either. They just hid theirs more than others. And so we limited the body of God, Christ, because we hadn't got over to the other side. There's the people that understand that I am to do, uh, that it's not because of works. Works is not saving us. And it, can y'all say amen to that? We are not saved by works. In fact, the Bible calls them dead works. If you're doing them to be saved. I found two kind of works in the Bible. Dead works 
in good works. All through the New Testament. There's dead works and good works. What's the difference? It's, it could be results, but it's basically the motive. Remember I said when you get saved, your motive changes. You want to do right. Well, why do you want to do right? Religion says you better do right or the boogeyman's going to get you. You better do right or hell's going to be hot on you, little lady. I, I got told that probably a few times. Girl, don't you know? Oh, my daddy. <laughs> I don't know why he picked this out of works. We're talking about the works of flesh. He said, he'll say, you know the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Well, it also says uh, the, the, the haters and it talks about the, the adulterers and talks about murders and talks about the fearful. But he picked out liars. I don't know what it was because my daddy could not stand liars and I got the same thing and, and I was afraid. I, was, I could just feel the flames lipping up, lipping up on me. <laughs> All liars. And we couldn't even call each other liars. We'll have their part in the lake of fire. Well, let me tell you something. You know the, the key word right there is part? Portion? I tell you what, you keep doing those things. Even the fearful, you're going to have some part. You're going to have some portion of some fire in your life because you're going to feel the fire of the Father right on your little rear till you quit telling, you start telling the truth. Because it's not about, he ain't worried about you not lying. What he wants you to do is just tell the truth. He's not after the liars, he's after the truth. It's a flip, but it's huge. Tweet that one, somebody. It's not about the liars he's after. He's after the truth. Because when truth comes, the lie goes away. Quit fighting the darkness. Just bright some, turn the lights on. Darkness is gone. Quit trying to combat all the lies. Don't just tell the truth. And people go, oh, that's what that means. Oh, I'm, I'm walking in some deep waters lately. What about this works thing? We know it's not works that I can boast. But I was ordained to have some good works. There were dead works in the Bible, and I'll just, we don't even have to go there. I'll just quote them real quick because I'm not going to be able to go into all of that. But you need to understand that the word is in the Bible. In Hebrews 4 19, he said, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? He said, Christ came. How much more? What, what else do you want the man to do? He brought his own son. He wrapped himself in flesh. What we call the son of God. And he come down and offered himself without spot to God to purge your conscience from dead works. He said, I've overcome the world. See, Jesus lived a sinless life so we didn't have to. Oh. You know why? Because you ain't going to ever get there. As long as you're living and breathing. They tried that in the Old Testament, didn't they? And they had to fear God in them. You got caught in adultery them. They stoned you. Kids, let me tell you what happened in the Old Testament. You sass in your mom and daddy, they could stone you to death. Disobedient to parents. Aren't you glad for grace? You don't you need to learn the song, Amazing Grace. I heard that one too. You better be glad. You on this side of the cross, honey. We'd be getting the elders together right now, Pamela Nell. Then might be the elders be called on you, Pamela Nell. And now use your middle name, you know you're in trouble. For y'all now know it's Pamela Nell. After my mama's baby sister died at 18 months old, so Wanda Nell. How much more is the blood of Christ? Take your conscience away from dead works. Dead works is works that you're doing to try to earn the love of God. To work your way to heaven. To not have the wrath of God someday. That is dead works. He said, I've already done that. How much else you want me to do for you? You need to purge yourself from your guilt all the time saying, but I didn't work enough. I lived in guilt thinking I didn't pray enough, study enough, fast enough. Didn't visit enough. I lived under condemnation because I was never enough. Because I didn't understand that he said, I did it. I paid the price. But that you don't have to, that you don't have to fear that you have to live such a perfect life or you're never going to make it. Do I want to sin? Why would anybody, Paul said, he goes, 
why would you want to continue in sin just so grace would abound? You ever heard, well, I'm saved. I can do what I want to. What's wrong with that, Maruf? Why do you want to keep sinning? Oh, because it's fun. Oh, sin can have pleasure for a season. That's why people do it. Feels good. Meets the need for them. But only till it's over. And it always costs you more than you ever planned to pay. Take you further than you ever planned to go. Keep you longer than you planned to stay. At some point you grow up and go, there's a reason why mama told me not to play in the street. I just saw what happened to that frog out there in the street. He's squished. Oh, I used to tell my kids that. You see that dead? Going on the road would be a dead dog. Gary first say, look at that dog napping on the road. And he'd be, no, kids, it's dead. Because it didn't obey its mama. That little squirrel didn't stay in the nest where it belonged. It ran in the street. That's what's going to happen to you. Oh, fear can work for a while. When you're immature, you need fear. He says, when you're a baby, you need some tutors. You need some people to go. But when you grow up, you don't need all that. He said, when you grow up and you're filled with the Spirit, you have the anointing that tells you what's right, what's wrong. Tell you, do that, don't do that. I read you last week up there on the board. He said, it'll teach you every good thing. It'll tell you what to do when you've got it. Because you matured a little bit. Y'all are quiet, but that's good preaching right there. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. They should not boast. Oh, they took that down. Every now and then. <laughs> no, it's not me, y'all. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Oh, Lord. How much more should the blood of Christ purge your conscience from dead works? I wrote on here, you don't serve him. We don't serve him to appease our conscience. Dead works are those works that have no life. They're fruitless. You know what that means? Having no life means there's no breath. That means God did not breathe those works. Oh, it may look good. But let me tell you something. If it's not God speaking it and breathing it, it won't really have the results. The Bible says they labor in vain that build it. If you're not letting the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. How many people are building cathedrals and building programs and building this and that? And God may never even told them to do it. It's good and you give your money and you pay off those buildings. I had a sister tell me, she said, I really hate to ever have to think I have to give more money to another building, a pro, a, another building program. We get so involved in building stuff and spending our money on it. We get focused. There's nothing wrong. We needed this building. It's pretty nice, isn't it? It's got air conditioner blowing. You, you're glad you got seats with cushions on them. As long as I preach, it's really nice. But the truth is, this is not about what you can do in the natural. And then when the Lord breathes it, I believe you can build a church and pay for it and not have to be under debt and nag people for money. I believe God pays for what he orders. And you're working so hard and we're going to do this. And we're gonna, at some point, I got tired of doing a bunch of works just to try to make this thing, get this uh, going down the road. I said, if we don't do anything, yeah, get underneath the tree. That's what we're going to do because this is not bigger than what these buildings are. And if God did not breathe it, it can be dead works. It just ain't going anywhere. It's not reproducing. It looks nice, feels good, but it's not produ I don't want to have dead works in this church. I want, what, if it, God said it, let's do it. If he didn't do it, let's just say, we don't need to do that. I don't care if everybody else and their brother's doing it. We don't have to do that. We're led by the Spirit of God. And then you don't wear the saints out. You don't wear people out. Because we get into a lot of works thinking we're doing God a favor when he didn't need any favors. Sister Linda said this morning, he don't need your money. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and thousand and one and two and three and four. He owns it and the cows and the hills and owns it all. And he doesn't even need your money. And you know what? We don't have to have your money. If God says something, it's going to happen. But you know how he chooses to do it? Through you. Amen. Through your vessel. He said, do you trust me with the money? If you try, He said, try me and see. Just test me and see if I won't bless you. This is not about your money. It's about trying God. Do you trust God to pay your bills? Or you want to, I got to hoard it all up. It's all about me, 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 me. Well, let's see how that works for you. This might be in my speech a little later. But there's no selfish people. There's no selfish people that really become successful in this world. 
there's no selfish people. I don't care if, I don't care if you live in a multi-million dollar mansion. They are miserable. You never are going to be satisfied because that's the God he put in you. Every living, every living, breathing person got the breath of God in them. And then they come out of their mother's womb. They take a deep breath. That's God's spirit coming in them. And in that, it says, I want to be somebody. I want to do something for the kingdom of God. And you don't even know what it is. And you're never going to be satisfied till you get it. You were created unto good works. Before the earth began, it was planned for you to help somebody do something, love somebody. It's God's plan. It's you. You're going to be the one to give the money. And I guarantee if you're a person, he can put it through. It'll come to you if it can come through you. If not, you'll just have enough. You may never have the abundance of God that you have more than enough. We listened to testimony. This wasn't in my deal. We listened to testimony somewhere this week. That, I mean, who, when one of the ladies... Sister Carol, she's sick. We need to pray for Sister Carol. She's really down in her back and her hip. But she talked about she'd gone through a divorce. She was alone with two kids and she didn't know what she was doing and she couldn't make her bills. And the Lord, she, Lord showed her, said, test me and see. If you'll, if you'll put me first, test me and see if I won't take care of you. And she said, it was weird. She said, it's like every week I had food in the pantry that I should have not even had. She said, my gas, I went, she said, I went like two weeks on an eighth of a tank of gas. She said, I don't know how it happened, but by God, show me. If you'll try me, I will show you. I'll open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing you cannot even contain. That means you have more than enough that you'll give it away. These are some good works that were ordained in you before the kingdom, before the world ever began. Some people can't handle a lot of money. They destroy some. Money doesn't change anything. Y'all know that. If you're an alcoholic and you get money, you win the lottery, you just buy more expensive alcohol and buy it for all your buddies. If you've got a drug addiction, you're just going to buy, you, instead of smoking crack, you might get a little cocaine. I don't know. I don't know what's more expensive. But what happens, the more you get, the more you, money does, doesn't change your problem. It can aspirate it. It can actually give you more fun to ways to do it. Some people only serve God when they're broke. Broke, disgusted. There's some more words that I don't remember. They might not even be good ones, but at some point, you learn that God will use your vessel for every good. He'll give you money if that's what you need. He'll give you gifts. He'll, he's got everything. He knows what you were created for before you were born. Dead works are those with no life. God, they're not God-breathed deeds. They're deeds that, and rituals that come out of something that people have got in their mind that they, that they do this, it's going to please God. I'm going to earn his approval. I'm going to earn his acceptance or I'm going to miss hell. They think serving God is not sinning. We used to have that word a lot in our church. They're serving the Lord now. Oh, pray for brother so-and-so. He's quit serving the Lord. Well, that was, what did that mean to us? The Lord asked me this this week. What did it mean when you said that? What I meant when I said they're not serving the Lord anymore, I meant they're, they're out in sin. They've left the church and they're doing wrong. They're not serving. We think serving God is not sinning. That serves me. Not sinning is what makes me have a good life. Not lying, not cheating, not stealing, not committing adultery on my husband and putting God first. Obeying those commandments is what gives me a good life. That serves me in this life, does it not? How, I, how do I serve God then? I serve God by serving you. I serve God. It means I take what he gives me and I go out and I serve it. He gives me gifts, I use them. He gives me fruit, I use them. That's a good Did you get that? Somebody got it. Serving God does not mean not sinning. Out of who I am, I will stop sinning. I do not want to sin anymore. It feels so good doing right. I go, why would I go back to that life? Really? Paul said all things were permissible, but not all things is very uh, um, beneficial for me. Not all... <laughs> All things are permissible, but not everything's beneficial. It's not the right thing to do. Could I go out and get high today if I really needed to or wanted to? Probably. He probably would have struck me down, but it wouldn't be very beneficial. And you know what? And why do I want to do that? It's not even in me. Why would I get high on that when I get high on this? And quit telling people, you need to stop doing this. Don't tell them what they do need to do. And when they start doing it, they don't want that anymore. In fact, he said, if you walk in the Spirit, you won't even fulfill the desires of the flesh. Yes, 
if you learn how to walk after him, fill me with your spirit. Overcome me. As I start doing that, I overcome me. I don't even want the desires of the flesh anymore, he said. I don't have to come in and tell you, you need to quit doing this. You need to quit doing this. This is what we told people. They focused on doing some works. Get it right, honey. Get it right. Get it right. Do what this do. And because of that, they just focused on what not to do. And you know what? It makes you want to do it more. It's called the forbidden fruit. The more you can have her. Oh, she's sure looking good. <laughs> Sister Linda just said, where you put your focus is where you put your strength to. What you they tell race car drivers when they, I heard this, I guess it's true. Everything on the internet's for, true, right? <clears throat> they say as they're going around there, they say, tell them, do not look at that wall. You look in front of you, you look at the wall, you're going to go to the wall. If I tell you, if I, anybody that's fasted, you say, I'm not going to eat today. I'm not going to eat today. <sighs> I mean, I don't even eat breakfast, but by 7.30, I'm like in the refrigerator. <laughs> Those corn nuts look good. I mean, it's just like, you tell yourself you're not going to eat. You want to eat. I remember John. We need to remind him of this one. He might need to remind it again. <clears throat> but when he worked at the tire company, he worked up there in Michelin. He said he'd get up every day, Lord, help me not to think about women. <laughs> help me not to think about the girls at the job. Help me not to look at them over there. They're slinging them tires and do it all. So help me not to think about women. He said, I, go, I, I thought about women all day long. <laughs> he said, he got up one day and said, Lord, help me think about you. Help me think about you. He said, at the end of the day, I realized I hadn't even been looking at them women all day because I was thinking about him. Focus on him, everything else comes into focus. Focus on him, everything else starts comes in focus. He said, seek his kingdom, his kingship. That ain't just being seek heaven, seek Jesus. No, seek his kingdom. That means you're the boss. You're the king. I want what you want, Lord. I want you. I'm seeking you. When you're seeking him, all this other stuff just loses its desire. It just don't taste good anymore. I've had people come to the Lord and serve the Lord and then they try to go back and make another round of the pig pen. <laughs> you know what? It just ain't as fun as you remembered it. <laughs> and if you're really born again, you just don't even fit in. In fact, you start feeling sorry for all of them. Like, oh, I need to get them to Sister Pam or something. Hey, I remember somebody did that right now. You remember that day you came to my house, Jeff? He said, I'm not doing right, but I want to help these people. Don't make me cry. You already did. Too late. Because <laughs> you're changed. Amen. Even though you haven't changed out here, you're different. You go in that house and the people you used to want to use and abuse and take advantage of. All of a sudden you feel sorry for them. And you just, something you just says, I might not be going to church, but I don't know where to send them. <laughs> Happens all the time. People tell me, somebody sit on a bar stool. You know, I may not be doing right, but I know what's right. My, daughter, my mama taught me better than this. And I know where there's a good church, and I know where there's some people, and I know there's a Gary Weeby to love you, and he'll tease you and aggravate you, but he'll love you. And there's a woman named Pam Weeby she said she'll do that. And there's other people in this church and I know this one, this. And you'll, you'll start wanting to tell people, even in your sin, you'll want to tell people. Because you've been changed on the inside and you've been bought with a price. And you've been ordained before the beginning of the world to do some good works in your life. And you want to get it out because it's in you. But he said you need to purge yourself from iniquities because if not, you're just going to sit there and you can't be used in every good work. It's hard to be used when you're sitting, in, uh, sitting somewhere in a rehab, you're trying to get clean again. It's hard to be used when you're sitting, uh, you're sitting in jail. It's hard to be used when you're bound up with, with shame and you've gone through another bad divorce and you're all so here and you're like, oh, if I just listened to what you told me in the first place. It's hard to do it. He said, that's why you need it. At some point, in every house, there's, there's good vessels. There's, and he said, they're, they're vessels. They're God's vessels. There's some of honor and some of dishonor. He said, if you just purge yourself from iniquity, I can use you for every good work. 
Even on the drunk's bar stool, he can use you for some good works. But at some point, if you purge yourself from the twistedness of your mind, which is what iniquities is, and stuff that you've had for years, if you'll do the work and get in there and say, help me, I'll come to the men's retreat, I'll get to the women's retreat, I'll do whatever it takes because i got some stuff in me that needs to got, get gotten out. And I don't want to live the rest of my life the way I'm right now. And somebody come to see me, 79, 69 years old, saying, I, it's just too late. I've wasted my life. I'm like, no, it's not. It's never too late to do the right thing. And I said, in fact, you bring a lot of wealth to this thing right now. You've lived 69 years of experience that you can tell somebody else, don't do what I did. Don't waste your years. Don't do this. I'm telling you, God will use you at every point. At some point, give your vessel and say, here I am. And this is not about dead works trying to please God. It's about, I, that's what I was made to do. I cannot help myself. We're his workmanship. He's working on us, y'all. I'm a work in progress. Anybody else a work in progress? You probably ought to have some caution tape around you. Saying, I'm a work in progress. <laughs> Before it gets to be a crime. <laughs> crime area. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny right there, ha huh? That was good. Gary, Thank you, Lord. Gary would be proud of that. Thank you, Gary would be proud of that. Get some caution tape before you get some, what do they call it? Cry, uh, crime scene. I've created, that's funny right there. I've got some, whew. Oh, we got a lot of scriptures that the people that want to teach works can use. And, and, I, and I don't want to, I, I'm going to dev into a couple of them just real fast. Because if not, you're going to go and go, yeah, but she didn't talk about that one. Well, you know what we got to do? We got to get stuff in this right context. This is the problem. People pick and choose and take scriptures and quote them. Faith without works is being dead. That's, I know what, that came out of some old, mm-hmm. Yeah, you may say you have faith, but you, you got to work. You, you are required to do something. We want, we want everybody to work their way to heaven. And you know what? We're so afraid somebody's going to get there that didn't deserve it. You think you're going to be in heaven? I don't think so. You didn't work as hard as I did. I quit partying. You quit, yeah, mm hmm You mean you think you can party and go to heaven? I can't? Yeah, you think you can go to jail and I don't have to? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm fixed to feel that gangster walk coming on again. Whew. James 2, we use this one. You quoted part of the faith and the works. I think I'm going to jump into this. We'll see how far we can go with it. On the 14th verse of James 2, 14th verse, he said, uh, uh, What shall it profit, my brother, and though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, we just read that it's by faith and not by works, lest any man can boast. Which scripture is right? If you ever find a contradiction, you need to look a little deeper and you need to look and see what it's talking about because the Bible does not contradict itself. Mm -hmm. He's talking there. If he, I'm not going to go into all of this, but well, actually right there he said, uh, I'm talking to you, those that will be judged by the law of liberty. Say law of liberty. Which is opposite than the law of sin and death. The, back, the old law was the law of sin and death. That means you sin, you die. You're worthy of death. We don't have that now. Now we're living under the law of liberty. We're judged according to the law of liberty. Hallelujah. He that's in Christ, you're free. He set you free. You're free indeed. That's some of the verses that go with that. But he shall have judgment without mercy that shows no mercy. And, then, and mercy rejoices against judgment. He said in the back, they didn't have any mercy. If you got caught in adultery, they stoned you. If not, you wouldn't obey in the law. But in this side... He said, judgment triumphs over, rejoices against judgment. Praise God for mercy. When I should have died in my sin, you did not let me. You showed me mercy. He said, what does it profit then, my brother? A man say he has faith and I have works can work save you. Well, let us finish that line right there. First of all, before you, let me tell you what save means. That's what you got to figure out. See, what we do in church, we take the word saved and we translate in our minds to mean what? Salvation. Not going to hell. Eternal life. That's not what that word means. 
When he talks about you're going to have eternal life, he says eternal life. He said you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ that you what? He said he, he uh, John 3, 16. Why? I can't even quote John 3, 16. I almost went blank in my head. The whosoever believe on him would have what? Would not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. That's salvation. That is the gift of eternal life, which is not the same word here when he says, can he be saved? I, use, I taught this when we talked about the helmet of salvation. It's not talking about getting saved there. That's talking to people already been saved. You already got eternal life, quote. You've already been born again. Now we have a helmet of salvation. The word means deliverance, rescued. It also means to be whole, nothing lacking. That's what the word saved means. It's so -so. It means to be whole and complete. So he says, can a man... Without faith and without works, can faith save him or can it rescue him? Can it come in and make him complete? And I'll tell you why I know. Now do the next line after that. Now it gives you an example. He said, can works save him? If a man or a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say to him, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, not with sin and you don't give him any of those things, what does it profit him? What he's saying, if I have faith... And all of a sudden I say, I believe in Jesus. And all of a sudden I see a, somebody on the corner or somebody that's poor or somebody in the church you find out they're talking about, I need, where's the food bank? I need some food. Okay, you can say, Lord, you can say, I have faith in God and I believe God is a provider. God is going to provide for you. And you have 20 in your hand and you know you could give them that $20 and say, here, go down here and buy your kids something at the Dairy Queen. I think that's what we have here, Subway. Oh, we're getting big now. We have Subway. He said, can that rescue them? Can that save them? Can that deliver them? If they need gas, can you just faith? I have faith in God without you giving them the money. Can faith alone do it or do you have to do something? Can you, I've, I always think about this because I'm, I'm a little leery of people standing on the corner saying we'll work for food. I've just been in that world so long. But I sit there and my, but sometimes I want to say, Lord bless them. And sometimes, I, that's what I say, Lord, help them. You know how they got there? Lord, bring them to the place. If this is where they are, bring them to their knees. But sometimes he just speaks to me, you need to feed that person. Can, does it feed that person if I just go by and say, be warm and be filled. God bless you. I don't rescue them. Oh, I just love Jesus so much. And you know somebody in the church or somebody in your neighborhood that has something that you have. He said, if a man needs a, your, a coat, give him your, uh, your, your coat. Give him your shirt. Give him your coat also. Give him, go beyond. Don't just tell people, I just ble I'll just be praying for you. But be careful that. That's a good one. It, oh, I'm just going to pray for you. It, either pray for them and usually pray for them right there. Either pray for them. I've stopped saying I will. I say, I am praying. I'll, uh, when I text that to somebody, I'm, I go, I'm, and I turn off my phone, and I pray right there. Yeah. Five minutes down the road, I'm going to forget to pray about them. Next time I see them, I'm like, can I say I've been praying for you? Lie about prayer. God, forgive me. There might be an earthquake. Liar. All liars. <laughs> I have your portion in the lake of fire, I promise you. <laughs> Every man's works will be tried as a fire. There's a work scripture. We could be real careful telling somebody, oh, I'll just pray for you. Or God bless you and not do nothing. I'll show you my faith by my works. I'll stop. And I'll pick up that abandoned dog and call the tire. I just thank God. People are so good. There's so I hate it when people act like everybody's depraved. No, they're deprived. People help my Hank. My Hank runs off every time. He probably run off today. If it blunders, he runs off. People call me over and over through the years and say, well, you have a dog named Hank? That's goodness. That's good works. They can see that dog out there in the street and go, well, just bless that dog, Lord. But some people go, you know, I can help that dog. Do you know those things matter? It shows your heart. How do you treat children and animals and people? That's one of the gifts of Kindness. It's one of the fruit that's in you. Those are those works that's in you. So, oh, there's so much more. Do y'all understand the difference in dead works? It's the motive of trying to do something to get to heaven or play. That's not going to get you there. But because of his grace that he called me and saved me, I have done the good works. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm really going to quickly, and this is going to test you back there on your scriptures how fast you can do this. Because I think it's important that you see this. 
um, Sister Carla did a talk at uh, a, a message, I'm telling you, she preached uh, at our women's thing about uh, hope. And she went through a long list of scriptures, just one after another. And it was so powerful, Carla, because when you hear the word over and over and over, you go, wow, it's that many times? I want to talk to you all about good works for a minute, real quickly. Because here's, let me say one of my very favorites, Matthew 5, 16. It says, let your light so shine before men that they see your good works. And they glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, it's not about me. If I've got the glory in me, I've got the anointing in me, I've got the light, then let it shine before men that they will. How does it shine? Oh, I just got Jesus shine out of me. This is how it shines. Good works. It's good. It's good. Don't sit there and tell me you got the Jesus shining and there's no. Then you can say it. You may have it for a while, but you're just covering it up with a bushel. You're not letting a basket. Nobody can see anything until they see your good works, and then they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's why we do them. That's one reason we do them out there because they see mercy in me. They know my Father's merciful. They see goodness in me. They know my Father is good. They see long suffering in me, and they see that my God is long suffering. I'm bringing him to them by the fruit that he's got in me. It's his spirit. It's his gifts. They see when I pray for somebody and they get healed. They don't look at me, and but they say, that God, she, she knows how to pray to a God that knows how to heal. And glorify our Father with the gifts that's in you, the fruit that's in you. They start glorifying God. They see God through you. That's the whole big thing about your vessel. So it matters how I possess my vessel. That means how I own it, how I take care of it. It matters, y'all. Amen. He may love you and got you covered, but you're out there at your job acted like a fool. It's not, they don't see your father. They see the other one, which he said is the works of the flesh, which comes from the devil. And what's father in that in you? He said, he told some people, he said, you're of your father, the devil. You know what the, what de the devil fathers? He fathers lies. And they see you speaking stuff out of your mouth that's not even who you are. That is your father, that lie devil. He puts lie babies in some of us. But what we have inside of us is the spirit of God that comes out. He says, do these things and they'll glorify your father. And the things is the good works. It's the goodness. It's the mercy. It's the long suffering. Let's jump onto this one. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 17 and 18. Oh, I talked about money a while ago. This is probably because I read this this morning. First uh, Timothy 6, 17 and 18. Charge them that are rich in this world. There's some rich people. There's some rich people maybe in this house today. Hopefully there's a bunch of you. If you're not rich now, get rich. I'm, just, I'm, I'm tired here. I just realized that. Getting so happy, I'm just losing my deal. That's all right. They always see me on the video. Um, lost my place. Okay, 70. Charge them a rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in their uncertain riches, but trust in the living God, which richly gives us all things to enjoy. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having... There's nothing wrong with having money. How many of y'all would like to have a little more? Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Trusting in uncertain riches rather than the living of God is where the evil comes in. You don't really need God to help you pay your bills. We all probably went through some poverty times where we needed God to help us pay our bills. Me and Gary got some stories about that we can tell you. And we learned that we can trust in God when we didn't have any money. That's why we can freely give today and that's why we probably have some money today to give because he trusts us with it. Because he says this is what I want you to do with it. Which God gives us richly to enjoy that they do good that they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate that's your behavior it's how what you do with your money you are given money so you can distribute it and use it for the kingdom doesn't mean you can't buy yourself a house or a boat or a new a, a shotgun if that's what you do God gives it you richly things to enjoy I am to enjoy the fruit of my labor it's okay it's okay to drive a nice car. I want to drive a nice car. I don't want to have to trust God to start my car the rest of my life. But I've been there and done that and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's how I learned to trust him. The place he could start trusting me with more things. He will entrust those that he can trust. He entrusts you to you can do good works ready to distribute. Can I get an amen on that? Somebody distribute something. Don't be saying gimme, gimme, gimme. But that's all right quickly here. We'll go on to uh, 2 Timothy 3.17. 
that the man of God may be perfect or complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Here's another one. You don't even have to, I'll just read them. If you can catch me, you can catch me. First Titus, um, uh, I mean Titus 2 and 7. In all things, showing yourself a pattern of good works. You're supposed to be an example to your kids and to your grandkids and those around you, an example of good works. Marks matter. They matter. In doctrine, showing uncorruptedness, gravity, and sincerity. Titus 2.14, he said, Jesus, who gave himself that he might redeem us from all iniquity to purify himself a peculiar people, zealous of. Say that again, zealous of what? That means you're ready to do it. I love Brother Tony over there. Brother Tony, raise your hand. This man is, there you go. He's come in this church. There is, he wants to do. He'll call me. Do you need coffee? He'll come, he brought me like coffee. I, I'm like, that's enough coffee, Bubba. We got enough coffee here. I mean, we won't always have enough coffee, so don't let it go dry. But <laughs> he'll call me. Do you need something done at the churchyard? You need, I'm telling you what, you talk about a man zealous of good works. He loves the Lord and now he wants to distribute. He wants to use what he's got. He wants to do something. You, God loves that heart. He said, I'm preparing you. I'm, I'm taking the iniquity out of you. The old twistedness. And now you want to have zealous. I don't want to be zealous for the enemy. I ain't out there trying to do what I can do. Show off myself to everybody else. I want to show off my good works to the glory for my Father in heaven. Titus 3 and 8, he said, this is a faithful saying, 3 and 8, that these things that you affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain, say it, be careful to maintain what? These things are good and profitable to men. You want to be profit, you want to be uh, prosperous in life. That's what's good and profitable. Maintain good works. Pay attention how you're living. Pay attention what you do. I love the charity things you do, Brother Josh. You're always raising money for this and that and out there. Those are good works. Those are not buying you a ticket to heaven. But you know what? They're not to get you all the glory, even though we give you honor for that. And each one of you, even in the military, that's not because, of, but it's good works that come out of you. It's good works when you're a Marine. It's good works when you're in the military, when you're doing these things. If you're working on the job, whatever we're doing, that God pays attention. People see that. When you pass around the things, pray for this child that's got cancer. Or let's go do this. Those are good works. It says, be careful to maintain good works. It's good and profitable to men. It's not good and profitable to God. God don't need your profit. You need it. <laughs> your family needs it. Your community needs it. Your world, this corrupt world needs some people to sell us of good works. That's us. Hebrews 10, 24, and this is what I'm trying to do right here. He said, let us, oh, I'd skip one. Maybe. Let us be careful to provoke one another to love and to good works. I'm trying to provoke y'all today. That means prod you on. Pay attention when someone's doing a fundraiser, doing something. Go out and let them see. Do it in the name of Jesus. James 3.13, who's a wise man? Who endures knowledge among you? Who's endued with knowledge? Let him show out of a good conversation. That world means behavior. It means behavior. Straight up behavior. Out of good behavior, his works with meekness of wisdom. There's meekness is one of those fruit of the spirit. First Peter 2.12, having your conversation, your lifestyle, your, your behavior honest among the Gentiles whereas if they speak against you evildoers they will see your good works by your good works they'll behold and they will glorify God in the day of visitation that means when God shows up on the scene that he sees they see God in your life they'll say look what they did and I see now it's the glory of God if they want to talk about you they can talk about you but all of a sudden they see your good works and they go wow she ain't all that bad Oh, they may still be doing that, but look at how much they love people. Look how kind they are. Look how long-suffering. Oh, I can't even, there's so many. In like manner, also, women adorn yourself. Oh, Jesus to God, I've been doing that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here. First Timothy 2.10, real quick. Hold on to yourself. This is talking to women. I was going to do this last week, but I didn't get to it. He does have scriptures to women. He does them for men too. Okay, let's do uh, t a nine. Let's start through nine and ten. 
skip up one there, nine and ten. I might as well get this one in. It's becoming summer. <clears throat> in like manner, also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I went there. <clears throat> That's the word. That's not Pam Weeby. Why? Why does it matter how you dress? That's dress right there. Apparel. Modest. It's a part of you representing it's your works. It shows who you are. And when you're buying your summer things this summer, I want him to say what things. Look in the mirror.